Okay, isn't there something here that uh, you guys said that I got to do so I don't hear it talk at me? Mr. Mr. Ellis? Yeah. Uh, let's put that over there. Uh, let's go back to wherever that was. No, I want this. No. Uh, take out your devices, get to the PowerPoint. Do it now. Devices, people. Devices. That's me. Say what? Um, yes, you can. You can't be at the same table as anybody else, but you can. Do you all see this on the screen right here? See the bold face print at the bottom? That's what your, uh, what do you call it? Bulletin board says on, on campus. So what's it telling you you got to do? You're going to grade the study guide, and I am going to provide the uh, study guide to grade it with. It is presently not there yet. I will put it in before day's end. Okay. Uh, here's the goal for today. I want to finish epithelial cells and start connective cells. Uh, but you got to make sure of a couple of things. Let me make sure you understand these couple. Uh, first, let me get this off here. Um, you have a lab book that has these tissues. I don't know the lab number, but it says right on your uh, daily schedule that's in uh, under topics, which labs you're doing, but you'll figure it out. The epithelial lab and connective and then nervous and muscle are on the same one. What you need to do is once you've taken a picture and you get it approved by me as you have been doing, yes, you have to draw that in on that lab and then there's a series of questions to answer this is the lab that you're doing i'm just doing the following i'm doing you a favor by saying here's the procedure you're doing the procedure while here at home you're going to write in the answers to all these and draw these why draw if i got a picture ellis what's the big deal why can't i draw because this when you draw you're gonna to need to label the parts. You hear what I'm saying here, label the parts, which parts? All of them that are on each picture within the PowerPoint I'm gonna put up in a minute. Y'all hear me here, okay? So you're gonna draw those in there and as you draw, you're gonna say it out loud. As you put a thing in, you're gonna say that out loud. So as you draw these, what are you doing? You're memorizing. All that, hear that there? You're memorizing. So in the memorization process there, you get done with the labs, we grade the labs, we grade the study guide, you're ready for this test. That's the hope. Y'all hear that there? So right now, uh, we're gonna do that, do it, do the little lecture part, do the lab, lecture, lab, lecture, lab, you with me there with your microscope. So when you get your microscopes out, they're gonna go on your tabletops and you need to make sure you either juggle very carefully them both because I don't want either going to the floor. Right? Yeah, everybody. You might have to just put your computer on the floor and just pick it up when you need it. Y'all hear me? Yeah. So everybody knows what you got to do for Monday as far as it's concerned. Okay, good. Let me get to where we need to be. All right. Um, Mr. Ellis. Uh, Mr. Ellis. Let's see here. It is. <laughs> You're doing three technically. I believe that sounds about right. 
No, today we're going to start connected. We're going to finish epithelia. I believe the last time we were together, you did what? Oh yeah. But I mean, you just you just saw that right there, right? Okay, let me see. Oh, come on, you hunk of junk. I forgot we got to do this, you know. Didn't we just show you this and you were about to go to the back and do this one? Am I remembering correctly or did I miss up? Because or did we, we finished this, actually take it back. We finished this, yes? Where I'm on the screen now, we finished that. We went on and I said, look, they're gonna look like this. But then I said, look, that's in the esophagus. It's gonna be quite layered, many layers, but we're gonna look at skin. It's not quite as thick. Look at this, yes? So what are you looking for back there? Because you didn't get this, right? Correct? You did not get a picture of this in your phone? Check. Well, check your phone, see if you have it. I think, I think we only got some that were not that were better. Okay. 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 Well, there's, there's two sections on it. One that has follicles in it yeah. and the other that does not. So are all of you telling me we're done with this one and I move on? Or what are you telling me? You need to look in your phone. If you've got a slide that looks a little bit like this, then you're done. If you're not, if you don't have it in your phone, then you're not done. Yeah, that's not a great one, but it's all right. And then I have this, but I don't know if it's the same thing. It's not. So there you go. All right, so we're going to move on then. I'm assuming you have it, okay? All right, so here we are. We're looking at stratified cuboidal epithelium. Stratified means what, guys? Stratified means what? Many layers, okay? With me here. It says this tissue is found uh, lining a lumen, so it's basically a tube that we're cutting in cross section. Several layers of cells provide greater protection than, of course, a single does. Lines, the ducts of mammary glands, sweat glands, salivary glands, the pancreas and its duct, ovarian follicles and seminiferous tubules. These are what we find. Now, I do not have a copy of this one. I do not have a slide for this. I would write that down. That means on your lab test, Will you see stratified cuboidal epithelium? Yeah. No, you will not, because I don't have a slide. Okay, but notice a couple things about it. If we were doing it, those would be the things you need to know, right? Uh, but we're not. So stuff that's here that we just talked about, like where it's found, etc. Here they're showing it as a sublingual gland ducts as they go up here. It says that uh, as we looked at it there, um, we got layers. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. But as I said, we get that cross section, and I see the free surface that's lining the lumen, and that's basically all we need to do. What you will know to need to know this for is the lecture test, not the lab test. So how about this one? How about stratified columnar? Well, it says it consists of several layers. Columnar cells are at the surface. It's not a columnar on top of a columnar on top of a columnar on top of a columnar. It's just the one that has free surface is columnar. The rest are not columnar. So it says here on the surface, cuboidal cells are found in the basal layers. This tissue is rare, found in the male urethra, linings of large gland ducts. All right, so what's it look like? Well, that has the top top layer there that you're looking at, or the layer instead of saying top, this layer. There's a number of layers, but the top one is columnar. Are you with me there? Yes, yes. We don't have this one either. 
So mark it on there and say, yeah, I'm not gonna see this on the lab test. This will not be on the lab test. And they're showing here in this lower picture here, and look here, they're showing you the re urethra. And normally the urethra is collapsed. As you can see this right here, it's almost collapsed shut, but it has a lumen. And as you would urinate, it would open more, not quite all the way to maybe circular, but pretty close, okay? So that's where we find that one. Transitional, we do have this one. This one is a little tough to grab and understand, but let's talk about it this way. You all know that your kidneys make urine all the time, 24-7. And where does it take the products to? So to make urine, it goes down a little tube called the ureter from one kidney. From the other kidney, you got another ureter going to the bladder, filling the bladder. And now the bladder gets full, and at some point it goes ding, 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 and you've got to open a sphincter and relieve yourself. Okay, everyone? Well, look at my hands. The bladder is getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. This lining of cells on the inside of this bladder, how is that being accomplished? Do they stretch? Are, is it a thick layer and then it becomes thick because it's full? Are you hearing what my question is? So that's what you're going to see here. So let's go on here. It says here that upon contraction of the wall of one of these organs, the tissue is composed of several layers of cells of irregular shape. Upon, underline that word, please, right there. Distension, which is that word up there. Distend means to what? Stretch. You guys have seen pictures of children in deprived, poor countries, and they show them they're almost naked, and their abdomen is like this. You've seen those? It's because they're going to eat. Are you with me here? Parts of their abdomen literally distend. You all hear what I'm saying? That's how that word would be applied. And it says here, cells become elongated functions as an expandable lining and prevents urine from diffusing back into your abdomen or back up to the kidney. You can get, if it goes back that way, and it shouldn't, but if it does, you can get uremic poisoning and it can kill you. So most of us operate all the time. Normal, never give it a thought until you might be 80 or something like that years old where it might just start to happen. Here's what it looks like. Now, Take it over here. Look how thick this is. Look how thin this is. This is distended when it's all the way full. This is when it's not full at all and there's no distension. Notice how the cells shape and the number of cells getting down changes. Do y'all see that there? So now what we have, as you see this, and the, and the artist has done a great job showing what that looks like. We have several slides of this. Why do I say several? Well, there are some that show both of these in the same slide, in the same field of view. And they look, if you turn it just right, it looks like a hobo with a black eye, okay? And I know you're looking like, what's a hobo look like? And how does a black eye have to be a hobo? So the hobo that we're talking about, there's slides like that. There's another one that shows a little star-like shape in the midst of tissue that you'll find. And it will, it, most of the time, if it's a star, well, it's collapsed a bit, so it's not distended. So you look at the inner lining and say, oh, this is it. There are some that are very darkly stained and there are some that are very lightly stained. I have an example of each. Here's the hobo upside down. So here's one eye, here's his black eye, it's swollen shut, and there's his mouth. Are you with me here? If you turn that upside down, it looks just like a hobo, okay? Now, what you're looking at here, this right here, that is not distended, is it? Because you see that little star shape? Look how thick the cells are here. That up there that is the mouth of the hobo, that is distended. So the layers there are very thick and very difficult to even see where the cells are. Here's another one, just having the one that is relaxed or normal, not distended. This is here too, and it's probably, you know what, can I hit that? Pardon me. 
it might help a little to begin to see the cells that are there. This one is another one. This is the lighter stained one, and this is the darker stained one. All three would probably be a good idea that you get. So you'll need to find where they are in the sleigh. It's in the sleigh. In the tray that we have back there, you can find the slide that's back there and do that. Do that now, but first get your microscopes before you get your slide. I'll turn the lights right now. Be careful, be slow as you move around so that you do not tear up or trip or whatever. You have the truck. This would be in the wall of your black. Okay. Well, what about the these examples are not the two other animals. That's what? That's not the other That's going to be on that one or the next one or Actually, one of the three that I can show you here. That's why you're taking three pictures. And then, wait. So what are the other ones? Where are they? What other ones? Like the other five. Like where are they? Like on the bottom. Compare. Yeah, like that, like that. Like, like where? that. What she said? Like where? They're stratifying all over what they said. Like where? Yeah. Where are these from? I don't know. That's what I'm What's that picture of? What's oh, that? kidney. Kidney. So it's found in those tubes. Those are called readers. That's the what? Oh, uh, bladder. Bladder. Good. On every one of these pictures, it shows you where everything is. See there? Where's that? Oh, the urethra. Look at this one here. That one's under the tongue and the salivary gland. And it says there in words too: seminiferous tubules, follicles. It says where they all are. Okay. Does that help? Is that what you're asking? Yeah, that's what I would ask. Okay. Coming, who asked? Somebody who's me? Yeah, I'm coming. Yeah. 
So that's one you're looking for. Here's the one you found. Oops. That's the one you found. This is the one you want to find too. Is it on the You need all three. Is it on the same slide? No, you gotta pick out a slide out of the tray. Good. You want to get another slide? Hi there. Very nice. You have that one right there. Yeah. Yes, sir. Good. Yeah, they have the same name. They're in the same tray. You just have to pick one that has one. It's different slides of the same thing. Yeah, like the Do you see the hobo there? Yeah, I kind of do. Are you see it? You see her hobo? Yes. Yeah. So here's the here's the black eye. Yeah. So that's descended. No, this is descended. That's okay, I forgot. This that's is not descended. Not correct. And then I took pictures of it. Like, good, good, excellent, good. You need three that are all different ones. But that one counts as one, which he has right there. This is not descended, right? That is not descended. That is one you want. Okay. All right, somebody was calling my name. So what was this No. 
If somebody else has a hobo in their scope, put your camera on that scope and get his picture. Gracious, you don't have to have it on yours. Supposedly, but notice how that's a darker stain and that's a lighter stain. And this is thick with cells. This is not, those are from two different places, but they're both this. They're both transition. Okay. As soon as you have your three pictures, you're done. You should be sitting back down. Yeah. Is that you talking to me? No, he's talking. Do you have a whole bowl in there or not? Well, the whole bowl had it. Show me the whole bowl. Show me the whole bowl. like that one, one that's lighter and skinnier, and then the hobo, which has both distended and undistended. Not going to matter. No, the other one, that one there is a lot. Yeah, yeah, this is the hobo. See that there? Just then, this is not the same. So, how can you ask us to talk? Yes, give me one of those three. Okay, Mr. Ellis, zoom in like this. That would be fine. Mr. Ellis, is that what you're asking? I'm just asking you what you need to show this. I'm going to ask you what is this, and I'll say, I want you to say transition. Would you not, you're not going to go. No. Or the Jack. Taking it in. 
All right, are we ready yet? All right, get to your seats if you're ready. Otherwise, stay where you are with your uh, computer. I'm moving on, okay? Here is a part of this chapter, which I will have no slides for. This is stuff, these next, I think it's like three slides, four slides maybe, is information that will be on the lecture test. That will be the first test you take when we finish, which is next week, by the way. When is that? Huh? When is that? When or what? When? Next week. When is that? I don't know. You'll have to look. That's why I write it down so I don't have to remember. So this is not going to be on the lab test. It will be on lecture test. Lecture test will be first. Okay, now got it? Yes, yes. The lab test. All right. In two weeks, though. It says that it's is it two weeks? Okay, whenever it says it's fine. Oh, oh! oh! I see all these faces of relief. I have fear. <laughs> Can I say something? Let me say this. Let me say this with my face being seen, okay? Is this a humdinger test? Yeah, yeah. Yes. So how are you going to make sure you're getting this along the way rather than going, I'm going to die tomorrow. I know nothing. I have to start studying. How are you going to do that? You go to your lab book and start drawing in those things and answering those questions. You also have a study guide that is also due before the lecture test. Both of those things get done. So you get both of those done, it's practice for the test. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. Are we with it now? Good. Okay, look up here. So uh, glandular epithelium. Glands. Name a gland. The what? What gland? I can't hear you. Adrenal gland. Good. Name another one. Sebaceous glands. True also in the skin. Go ahead. Next. What about here? This one here. Thyroid. Thymus. Thymus gland. You already said the ones on the kidney and the adrenal gland. Pancreas is a gland. All those sorts of things. We have a lot of glands around. So those we put into groups. Look here. Made of cuboidal and columnar cells designed. I love that word. Designed. These evolutionists wrote this book and they wrote in design. Are you with me here? Design, implying there's a what? A designer, good. They secrete substances into ducts and into body fluids. Glands that secrete products into ducts, that's tubes, that open into a body surface are exocrine glands to a body surface. You have ceruminous glands in your ear. They secrete a waxy substance called cerumen. It's to the outside. So it is an exocrine gland. Glands that secrete into the body fluids or blood are endocrine glands. Those glands we named a moment ago all fall into that category because all of them secrete inside you. This one here, the exocrine ones go outside. So two bodies or two kinds of glands. Now there are three kinds of classifications for exocrine, and they are meocrine, apocrine, and holocrine. So look, their meocrine glands are the most common. They release a fluid product by exocytosis. I'm gonna tell you this, but it is, it's gonna go to, you're not getting it, are you with me? The picture will show, okay? Some are serous and they produce a watery serous fluid. Others are my favorite stuff. Muka says there they produce a thicker protective substance. Examples are the pancreas, salivary glands, sweat glands. Hey, you know what's kind of cool? I don't know if any of you have ever witnessed this, but 
I think it's kind of cool, but you know, I'm sure they're, they won't like it. But anyway, um, the one, the gland that we looked at a moment ago, the little slides that's underneath your tongue secretes, when it secretes the mucus, it's stringy mucus. And sometimes when a person literally opens their mouth, lifts their tongue, it'll shoot. There was this girl that I knew in college that she could do it. And it, I mean, we're not talking like power wash sport. We're like, we're talking about like just from here to there. Okay, are you with me there? Cooler and cool. Every now and then she could do it on command. And she'd say, Julie, come on, here's the thing. So, so she'd go, and it would be a pile of stringy mucus. It was really cool. All right, apocrine glands pinch off a portion of their cell bodies during secretion. Mammary glands do this. Holocrine glands release the entire cell that then disintegrates and has all the secretions inside it. Sebaceous glands have that. Now, those are the three we're talking about. Here they are pictured. Let me hit this real quick here and then turn it back around. If you look at this right here, we're talking about here in this picture, under the tongue, salivary gland. Notice we have all these vesicles that release this stuff, and here it is, it goes here. There'll be another one of these here and here, and they all go into this tube that goes out. Y'all hear that? Yay. It secretes it. These cells remain intact and stable. And the mammary gland, you have this right here. And here's the piece. Pieces of it break off that have the secretions inside the vesicles. So it's pieces of it. And then there are cells that if another piece comes off, this is probably going to have to divide. They don't show that, but it will. So here we go with this. The last one, however, the holocrine gland, the entire cell leaves with all those pieces and it fragments up and goes out this way here. Um, so in this case here, that's what's going on in those holocrine glands, which is like sebaceous glands in your skin. They secrete a little thicker type of secretion that comes out over the hair. You can see this is where the hair comes out of the skin right here goes on the hair and on the skin to make it moist and pliable as much as skin can be there because it's normally a little bit dry. This one brings to mind a discussion that still goes on that you know will never be settled except for you individually. Uh, the question comes, gee, when you have a child, gee, do we breastfeed or bottle feed? Well, bottle feed, there are now, they can put some vitamins in it and all that sort of stuff. You can add to the, to the milk that you warm up on the, you know, in the bottle that you're gonna give the child. Here's what you can't get. These right here, they have these secretions in it and the whole cells all have organelles from the cell. All have other kinds of chemicals, some of which are for, to increase the immunity of the child who drinks this milk. Y'all hear that there? You can't get that in a bottle. Did you get that? Now, sometimes children, young children, et cetera, when they're born, it's like all the way up to some age where it is socially acceptable for you to stop breastfeeding whenever that is for you. If you do it, you provide that for them. That's the only advantage I'm aware of as far as breastfeeding, other than if you bring the plumbing with you everywhere you go, then you don't have to bring bottles everywhere. I would there. However, if you want to go out on a date with your husband, well, gee, that's going to be gone maybe two or three hours. She'll bust before then. Okay. So well, that's pretty good. Bust. Bust. I did a good one. That was a good pun. Okay. So um, she'll bust before then. So then you get one of those. Uh, pumps that you can pump the milk out that can be given to the child while you're gone. Again, only one or two bottles necessary that you're going to keep around if you're going to use the pump. But this stuff, as I said, is not the stuff you're going to be able to get from some little package or something you're going to add to the milk that you're going to give the child. Do children do fine on bottles? Yes. Are they going to be diminished in capacity? The rest of their lives because they didn't breastfeed? No. Uh, it's a matter of 
your personal decision, your preference, and all that sort of thing. But just to tell you, that was one little set apart little thing. Questions on that? Okay. Here's a little table that kind of brings all of that together for us as far as the neocrit, applicant, and holding lands, as far as what they are, what they do, and an example of them. For all of the epithelial tissue cells that we just looked at here, they all listed. Here's their functions and where we find them all in one table. Something you might want to use when you're uh, trying to memorize. All right. Epithelial, done. Okay. Now at this point, I don't think, what is the time? And when is this pitch nick over? 12 what? 45. 12.45. It's a second. Let me look at something here. That's me. Say what? Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Okay. 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 Why don't we do this as a little break? Why don't you put your microscope away and the slides back? But before you put your microscopes away, what do we need to do? You need to what? Make sure they're set, meaning how? Stage has got to be all the way up, got to be on what power? Low, which way does the eye poise, eye piece point? From the arm, which way does it go? Toward the arm or away from the arm? Toward, so turn it and lock it down with the little screw. Take the cord off. And now before you go anywhere to do it, I'll give you this here. Everybody see what I got? Yeah. What I got? So I want you to go over all of its surfaces, please. Here we go. I got two rags for you. When your microscope is clean, you can bring it and put it away. But it's not clean until it has this on it. So just leave it at your place. And when you have it clean, put it away. Make sure you put it away correctly. If I go back there, I'll put all of you back there to fix it. So put it in there. We have a, uh, I saw like a, there's a study guide for four that we already did. So yeah, I, yep. And, and you're going to grade that over the weekend. Okay. And then I saw, and I know there's a there's eight, nine, and ten textbook. That's the lab. Okay. Lab book, eight, nine, and ten. I was looking at five, and I didn't see a study guide like four. I'll check it this weekend and make sure. Okay. All right. And that'll be through like. Did you look under assignments? I, uh, I mean, yeah. You did, okay. Well, you did you, not see it? Because usually the study guides aren't listed in the They're not under topic. It's under assignment. Yeah. What I do now? Can I ask what the questions will be on the lab test? One more time. Can I ask what the questions will be? Yeah, what are they? You tell me the first one. What is it? The question is which type of, of tissue is it? Right, uh, of the four types that there are, which type is it? What are those types? First letter for each. Epithelial. Good. E. Epithelial, then what? Yeah. I was wrong. It's, it is under assignments. Okay, thank you. What's the next one? So epithelial is what you said. Connective. Connective or... <laughs> Two more left. Muscular. Yeah. Nervous. The last one. Good. Is that good? Um, is that good? Uh, that, those are all the questions. No, the second question. The second question is, if you could read the tag, what would it say you're looking at? Huh? Yeah, take the pass and put it on your chair, would you? How do you do that? Or do you have it? What do you mean? Uh, um, 
so like perfectly shaped. Like, well, these are fake nails. They're fake, they're not yeah. yours. So, well, my nails are the perfect. Oh my gosh. Okay, that's why they look perfect. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, and then third question. And then that one is what's it name of the French car? Which is the black thing? Yeah. Make sure you tell your mom and dad when you get home. I said you'll be good. Hello. All right. All right. Do we have everybody back? I still see a microscope or two out here, don't we? Would you check them? Did you check them for me? Would you look through them, handsome? Connor? They're all turned the correct direction? Thank you. Okay, good. Joy, she's a wonder, that girl. I'll tell you. Yeah, there'll be a, a word bank. Huge, huge word bank. Oh, but you know what they'll be on there, though? Choice A, B, C, D. What? Correct. And I use it. Say again. It's epithelial, connective, muscular, and neural. Nervous, yeah. And then there'll be a B action. The B is, if you could see the slide, what would it say you're looking at? What? Well, I have choice A, B, C, D, E, A, B, A, C, A, D, A. So it'll, the first question is what type of tissue is it? So that's epithelial. Since we have a question. Epithelial, nervous, muscular, nervous. And that'll be A, B, D. And then the second question is like, if you could see the label, what would it say? And that'll be like A, B, C, D, E. A, B, C, D, E, 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 A,
Fine. Support. Underline support. For support, we're thinking like, well, bone is connective tissue. Does it support a lot of things on your body? Hold them where they are, where they need to be? Yeah. yeah. Protect service frameworks, fill spaces, store our favorite stuff. Fat, no, not mucus, but what? Fat, that's my second more favorite word. Right Fat, produce blood cells, protect against infection, help repair tissue damage. All of that connective tissue does. Unlike epithelial tissues, connective tissue are apart from one another. Look at me. All the cells you looked at that were epithelial were butt up one to the next one. Isn't that right? Not even a gap between them. Yes? These, here's one cell, here's the other cell. Or here's this cell, there's the next cell with stuff between that is what makes it connected. Y'all hear me there? Yeah. Connective tissues have an abundance of what's called extracellular matrix or intercellular material composed of protein fibers and ground substance. Consistency varies from liquid, like in blood, or rigid, like say in bone or in cartilage or things of that kind, depending on what that ground substance is. Most connective tissue can divide. You need to go. Yeah. Uh, depending on the ground substance, most connective tissues can divide. Most have a good blood supply, except who? Let me ask you a question. If you tore something in your ankle and you wanted to be back into playing sports again the fastest, which do you want broken? A bone or cartilage? Why bone? It heals faster. Why does it heal faster? Better blood supply. Cartilage does not have a direct blood supply. It gets it from the connective tissue that surrounds it. How does it heal? Say what? How does it heal? Can't hear you. Whoever said that, what? He said, how does it heal? It gets it from a longer distance from a tissue nearby, generally, another connective tissue. So that's how it gets it, but it's got a long distance to go. Ergo, cartilage heals very slow. The worst one, I think, especially for your lower limbs, your ankle, probably the worst, is uh, straining, having a bad sprain. When you do that, literally you jerk that sucker out and that tendon and or the ligament there jerks it out like that. And once you do that, it's like a piece of metal that you tried to twist or do, getting it back to looking exactly the way it was, it's impossible. Almost the same in this case. Once you stretch out a ligament, getting it back to where it was, pretty hard to do. Your body will do a great job getting it close, but it won't ever be the same. Yeah. Good, let's go on. So this is connected still. See that stuff between those cells? mostly protein, some carbohydrates, some connected to the proteins that are inside membranes, cell membranes. And so as you look at this, that's what all that extracellular matrix is all about between cells. And that is a picture of very little extracellular matrix. That's very little there in that picture. Well, Connective tissue cells sometimes stay right where they are and they stay there for a very long time. Others wander like parts of red, white blood cells. They move all over. They can go through tissues. They can go anywhere they need to, to go get what they need. Fibroblasts, well, these are the, would you underline blast, please? Underline blast and write young over that, please. Young. Blast means young, meaning it's kind of like the first cell or precursor cell to the adult cell that we're going to have. Fibroblast makes uh, all sorts of fibers, that's its job. And then once all of them are in place, it just turns into a cell that's kind of in the tissue, but no longer a fibroblast. Wandering macrophages, they do phagocytosis, defend against infection, foreign parts, etc. Masks, guys, I don't know what we're doing, but your mask is off, sir, put it back on. 
stop throwing things at each other. Mast cells, large, fixed, located near blood vessels. They release, underline this dude, heparin. When you get a blood draw, and you know, you raise your hand. Have you had a blood draw? Good, okay. Most of the time they take that huge barrel thing and they stick it in there into your arm. And then they take these vacuum tubes, they're called. They're test tubes, they have a little rubber stopper in the other end. And that rubber stopper has a very thin membranous rubber piece that you can stick a needle through. You with me here? So it has a vacuum inside. So as soon as they shove it into the barrel, it has another needle going the other way and it just sucks the blood out into that tube. Each of these tubes have to have heparin in them. Otherwise, when the blood gets in that tube, it will clot up. We don't want it clotted, we want it intestinal. So we have to heparinize the tube. So the entire walls from top to bottom have to have heparin in them so that they don't clot up. Notice the next one here, histamine. You know that guy too, underlined histamine. Let's say you guys just get, uh, well, how about this first? Okay, your nose, nasal passageways are swelling. Your nose is going, and you can't get air in or out. What do you take? An antihistamine. It removes some of the water from that area that's being held so that you can breathe better. Yay. You get nailed, and here's a part of this that uh, I hope you know, but if you don't, let me tell you right now. Um, when you say get kicked in the shin, and it swells up and it hurts thereafter, you could have beaten that by doing what as soon as you got kicked? Ice or Advil. Advil is an anti-inflammatory, but ice is your best friend. You could put that on right now if you're at some athletic event. So you put that on there and it stops the pain. Not because it's like in there going all their nervous system. No, what it's doing is getting rid of the collection of fluid that's going to that spot. It's increasing the fluid, increasing the fluid until it hurts. You put ice on it as soon as you injure it, you're not gonna collect all the fluid. Don't hear that there? There's a balance there though. We need the fluid, some fluid there to conduct healing quickly. Gotta have it there. It has to be there to do that but we don't need all the extra that's there. Y'all hear that? That's a balance. So you ice, you take it off. You ice, you take it off. You ice, you take it off. That's the kind of thing that you do with it. Good. That's what causes pain, okay? Here's this dude right here. Uh, he is a fibroblast. He's the one that makes fibers. Here's a guy right here, the macrophage engulfing a bacterium. That's that green tie guy at the top. This one here is a mast cell. And now let's take it to this, connective tissue fibers. Connective tissue has to have a lot of fibers that run in it. Let me give you a for instance. You all have seen bone before, but when you've seen bone, one of the things about seeing it is you look at it, it looks dead. It's dried out. It's, there isn't a cell left in it alive. And its water content is diminished precipitously from the moment of death for that animal. But here's what something that you learn in physics. Say there's a soccer ball right there. I go like this to hit the soccer ball. What's happening from here to here when I make contact? It's happening to these two bones. They're bending. How many knew that? Raise your hand. They literally bend. Much the same as, say, a club of a golf club. You know what I'm talking about there? Before you get to make contact with the ball, it's already bent. Right? You make contact with the ball, it bends even more. More. Right? It even pimples in the face of the steel front of the club head. Isn't that right? Why would you do that? When you kick, when all those sorts of things, you do anything like that, these bones bend. You kick hard, they bend even more. If it were that dead bone, it's strong, but it's also, get this word, brittle. 
correct? So when it is dead that way, it will break. You have fibers in those bones, as well as the bone material you see when it's dead. Those fibers give it a little bit of play so it can move back and forth. Parallel bundles, it says high tensile strength to hold structures together, but not very elastic. Tendons and ligaments. Do they have a little give? Yeah, but not very much. When you guys pull the skin off through crux next semester, it'll take two of you at some parts. So in other words, you'll all have your own cat. Well, when you grab the skin and you're pulling, you'll both be going. What's holding it? Fibers. Fibers that will look like spider webby material, but they're not just going to go away like that. It's going to be pretty tough stuff. Elastic, yellow fibers, made of protein called elastin. They occur in thin branching fibers arranged in a network, also stretchy, and they add flexibility to types of connective tissues like vocal cords. We have to have our cords vibrate. For example, if I were to sing a C, the middle C on a piano, which I don't think I could do anymore, but if I did, how many times do your vocal cords go back and forth? Per second. How many? Anybody here a musician? Got a musician here? Middle C. Middle C is how many get this word? Hertz. Vibrations per second. 256. So each one of the strands of your vocal cords are vibrating 256 times per second back and forth to sing that C. Think about going higher. You go up one octave, it's now 512. Y'all hear that? Those elastic fibers are what are allowing your cords to vibrate back and forth like that. Particular fibers with thin collagen, fibers that form branching supportive networks, variety of tissues. So it kind of holds things together and holds them in place. Here's basically all we've said till now about the components of connective tissue. Let's look further here. Uh, here, connective tissue, you've got loose, which is what's holding this skin on right here that you see, and dense connective that's found elsewhere. Specialized connective tissue, cartilage, bone, blood, each of those are all connected, and they're all a little bit different and weird in some respects. The first one we're going to look at on Monday, when did you say this is over? 45. We're going to end early. Oh, oh, God. What are we going to do, guys? Should we get our scopes back? Maybe you should have the junior like maybe. Well, here, let's just go on. I got a few more slides. How do you say that name? Okay, aurelier is how I've heard it pronounced, but I would take aerial. Says here forms a thin, delicate membrane. Main cell type is a fibroblast. Matrix, that's what's outside of the cell, consists of a gel-like ground substance with collagen fibers and reticular fibers. Examples where you bind the skin, in other words, what's holding skin to the muscle or the bone that's directly beneath it. Um, under most epithelial layers and between muscles. You'll see that later. Now, that's one slide there. The next slide is what we call adipose tissue. What's it add another name for? Fat cells. Write it down so you know. Adipose tissue is fat cells. They contain epitocytes storing what's that, guys? What do they store? Fat. fat in the cytoplasm found under the skin between muscles around kidneys around abdominal membranes behind the eyeballs did i tell you what people are in concentration camps they're all skinny and nothing but skin and bones how do their eyes look sunken in you all hear that why would they be sunken in 
is that fat pad behind it is gone. It's a huge fat pad. Even now, close one eye. Put your finger on your lid and you're thinking, oh, I'm pushing on it. No, you know what? You're pushing on it. Well, it moves, but you're not dimpling in the eye. It's going backwards into the socket against that fat pad. Okay. Um, says here also it functions to cushion joints and organs, stores energy, and it insulates the body for heat. Exactly. Good. So we also have reticular connective tissue, has those fibers we mentioned. Fibers form what's called a three-dimensional network. It's not just a spider two-dimensional web, but it goes 3D. Uh, forms a network for certain internal organs like spleen, et cetera, and liver to be held in place. Now, let me show you this today. Look at this. Here's a cell. There's a cell. There's another. Another, 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 and another. And the rest of this is all what? Extracellular matrix. That's what that all is there. This other yellowish stuff is like a gel-like substance. So we have a collagen fiber. We have an elastic fiber in these long, skinny little jobs that are here. Fibroblasts that are there. Look at them over here. There's the fibroblast, 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 fibroblast. And then I see these little black lines, so elastic. I see these pink guys, there's a pink dude. That's a collagenous, that's two collagenous fibers running together. There's another two running together as well. This is the same stuff that holds your skin onto your body. Here's what, you see what that looks like according to your book, that's a textbook picture. Here's what yours looks like. When you go to your slide, you probably do this. Uh, no? Yeah, they tell me. Yeah, okay, I'll tell you what. I think you earned it this week. Um, in 10 minutes, seven or eight minutes, we will clean these chairs until then, relax in your seats. Good job, guys. You did well today. Yep. The main scab where is that? We don't know where to find it. Oh, well, I don't know. Okay, go up. People say, who let these people out? And what we say. No, no, no. I'm not going to be the teacher that someone says, did you let your kids out to go look for that? And I'll say, no, that wasn't me. My students always stay in my class. No one needs them. Let's take a look at that. Yeah. Where are we going to bring our uh, chapter four study guides? Uh, beginning class, you missed it. I'm putting in, well, here, I'll just do it right now. You're going to grade it over the weekend, put the grade in and submit it. And I'm going to right now put that, that thing in so you have it. Uh, do you guys see this right here on the left hand side of the screen here? See where it says we have the links there? There is a there. And right now I'm going to put in the answers to chapter. Wait a minute. I don't want to put this in this one, do I? Wait a minute. Uh, cellular metabolism. That's where the chapter thing will be. So here we go. I'll put your answers in there. That's what you're going to use to grade it. Really? I 
dólares. Do you all see what this says right here? Cellular metabolism key. Do you see that? Yeah. That's what you're going to pull up to grade this before you come to class on Monday. Yeah. Those are not study guides. Those are labs. I mean, labs. Labs I want done whatever day is graded on your sheet. You want me to pull that out? No, I can look at it. Okay. So it says on the daily schedule. So we uh, draw it and then you answer it. So right now we can draw it only because we only got only draw. Oh, and only like 10 seconds. And one of those we didn't do. Look at the name. There's one of those we didn't have. Which one didn't we do? One of those six we didn't do. What is it? I think we did that's skin. I don't know if we did simple clone. Simple clone, now we did. Yeah, we did that. I don't think simple clone. Maybe it's another one. Let me see. Let me see. Yeah, I might be. Maybe it's connected. Yeah. 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 Yeah, so you don't have that. Put the next one. Okay. So by the end of this unit, we have eight and ten on that. Oh, you see that one in the two? So, Mr. Rowe, what's been your favorite day of the week? What's been my what? Favorite day of the week of dress up days? Today I got to wear camo. So today? <laughs> I think it was Tuesday, yeah. Because yeah. you wear it for your advisor, right? Do what? And actually, my favorite day is today because then I can wear jeans and I don't have to wear a tie. You have to wear a tie every day? No, they just said if we're going to wear jeans, we have to have ties. Yeah. Yeah. If you wear like dress pants, you dress pants, you don't have to wear. <laughs> so the idea is to have us not look like replicas. So that's the idea. Does your wife try No, I can't. So I know it's amazing that I've gone a long time every now and then where I haven't tied one, but every time I get it around my neck, I'm like, I'm done. Every now and then I tie one and I'm like, it's a little short. You know, and you're like, Shh. so you gotta go do it again. Can you do the Windsor knot and the double Windsor knot? Oh my gosh, no. You kidding? I can do three different knots on my tie. I don't know if I can do it anymore. I used to. I don't know how to tie. I used to like tie it before you go to work. Oh, that's so cute. He probably fixed it the minute he got into the car. Okay. I never learned how to tie knots. I don't know how to do that. What do you guys do when you have those little tie thingies? In your back, you know, like your bathing suit things or oh, something. Yeah, like tie and you got tie. Can you get your hands up high enough, or you yeah. just tie it low and let it go up? No, I can tie. I can get my hands high enough. Yeah. Or put your hands behind your back. Let me see. Oh my gosh. Wait, let me see. Wait a minute. I don't think. I don't know if I. Can yeah. See, that's probably why. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, girls, what's up for the weekend? Is there a party? Oh, there's so many parties for every night. You're kidding. Shelly's not going to Really? I'm not going to well, That's kind of nice, actually. I don't think there's a party every night. Yeah, I know there's parties every night, but I'm not going to those parties. Where is it? I think Anna's going to be. Which one is the basement member? Is the what? The basement member underneath the epithelial. All epithelial tissues have a basement member. Now, some are more prominent. It's part of the epithelium, and it's still—it's probably more connective than it is epithelial, but it's what connects 
the epithelial to the connective that's beneath it. Okay, so because all epithelial tissue will have connective tissue directly beneath it. So if it asks for the non-living tissue underneath, you say that's connective. connected. That's connected, yeah. not basement. Not what? Well, not the basement membrane. Yeah, I'd say connected. Does it say non-living? Yeah. Say basement membrane. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's what I would say. So it's like sandwich. It's like sandwich between. It's neither connective or epithelial. Okay. Does that help? Neither connective nor epithelial. Okay, so it's like a separate thing, but it's still tissue. Okay. Yes. Sir. Hey, one of you. Oh, thank you, whoever reminded us. Would you come up and get the squirter, or she's got it? Would you all kind of wipe down the chairs, please? Thank you so much for doing that. Ella, what's going on? Oh, I'm all right. You getting keeping these tissues straight? Straight? I'm gonna try. <laughs> I, I struggled with a couple, but a couple of them. I'm okay with them. Mm -hmm. Did you already start the drums? Oh, what do you do with the drums? Yeah. You'll be surprised. Like I want to make this look like this when you do it, and you're like, this is this, this is this, and where are you then? I think the one I struggled with is pseudo gratified. Pseudo gratified. Yeah. That's the one I struggled with. It is. It's, uh, it's all a matter of you're looking at it in 2D, but it's 3D. Yeah. 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 What about you? You got parties this weekend? No, I'm going to be home alone. Home Which alone? Alone. Yeah. That's really going to be party. That's a party for me. Ah. Yeah, a party that I will enjoy myself. I, you know, when I was home, I did. Oh, my God. To be around. My parents said they're going somewhere. Kelly. Uh, helping them carry the bag. Kelly. The car. <laughs> Can't wait to get them out of there. Uh, oh, no, Is this still, huh? still going? Is it still going? Yeah, it's still yeah. going. It's Thank still you. going? That's so awkward. Hi, whoever's on the camera. Oh, hi. Look at that. Good look. Yeah, what? Well, hi. Look, Ready? Yeah. We can do a magic trick. <laughs> Woo! We're back. Where are you going? Did you see that? Uh, sure. Got sure. you. Oh, we're going to show a magic trick again. Do a magic trick. Ready? Hey. Steven, these girls are going to disappear. You ready? Ready? Three, two, one. I'm so excited. Oh. oh. Wait, wait, we'll come back. We'll come back. <laughs> Hold it up. Hold it up. Uh, we'll, I'll make Kelly appear. One, two, three. Uh, <laughs> that was cool. He's going to watch this and go, these people are in here. Yes, we are. He's going to show it to his friends from China, Ready? and they're all going to get your number. Yeah. Uh, my Instagram, my is, Instagram is phone number. I'm cleaning up. Go follow me. I'm wiping your keyboard for you, but not hard, just gently. Mr. Ellis, can we take a group selfie? Group picture. What? Can we take a group picture? Hop in here, Mr. Ellis. Oh, how do I take this? I'm in there. Put it here. Leave it. Leave it. Leave it. There we go. Kelly, you want to touch the button? Yeah. Is there a timer? No. <laughs> I'm smiling. Can you tell? Can you tell I'm smiling? <laughs> Yeah. Okay. I can't breathe. Send me one. We'll do. We'll do. Oh, Mr. Ellis. <laughs> What's your daddy up to? How is he like in school? These are cute. I think he likes it. He's online now. Is he? He's so he's at home four days out of five. He goes down on Fridays. Is he like get at the end of the day and he's shot in front of you all this? He well he they're only like half. He has like zooms with his kids, but none of them log on. Because they're he works at like a secondary school for kids that get kicked out of public school. Oh. So I'm like, why would these kids log on to school? So yeah. he like he's so excited because he like make he types out this whole thing on his Google Classroom and it's like really good. And he's like, oh, this sounds so good today. And like no one even looks at it. And I'm like, I heard it though, and it sounds good. Oh. But tell your dad I'll log on. But he's doing he's so excited because we're doing a neighborhood PE class on on Tuesday and Thursday. Can I come in so, like, I live in your neighborhood? <laughs> it's literally like our neighborhood kids. It's like kindergarten to eighth grade and like homeschool kids from like greenhouse and stuff. Like the Reno's basically like but all their friends. So he's like teaching this PE class two days a week and it's like his whole world. It's, oh, that's like, it's, yeah, it's really cute. Like he can't do that with his kids, but if he can do that. So. But he's loving so, life. Steven, have a great day. Okay. 
Say hi to your friends. Yes. Us. Tell your friends I said hi. Um, Kelly. This is my name's Abby. Kelly Bishop. Yes. Abby Gonzalez. Well, Miss Stralis is kind of favorite. <laughs> and you, Stephen, of course, you too. You're you're great. Us, us three. Uh, us three. We're the squad. Okay. You're probably not even watching this, but just know. It's yeah. throwing me off to like I look here. I know, but I gotta look there. But I want to look there because I'm there. Spill my eyes. Okay. <laughs> I was like, all right. Bye, Stephen. Have a great day. You know. Bye, Steven. <laughs> just like casually, you're just like, hmm. Bye, Steven. <laughs> my daughter would like it. My father loves sweet potatoes. I love sweet potatoes. He's gorgeous. He's like, sweet potatoes, sweet potatoes. Sweet potatoes. I mean, anything sweet potatoes. I really like the small. I really like the small. I like the small. I don't like squad, but I, yeah, I think. Is that it, guys? Well, bye. Make sure you don't disturb any classes at Berwyn. Uh, I never have liked the squad, but I've been playing everything on the front. Don't make it. They're like, come on, just do it. Like, yeah, try it once. <laughs> that's what my parents always. Yeah, say. so I try it, and I think it's I got my non-fear of food from them that's when good. I married because my father-in-law stuff. He like he liked you know uh, oysters on the half shell. He liked the scarbell. Mm -hmm. He liked octopus. He liked I mean all this. Wow, big seafood guy. Yeah, he was a seafood guy, and then. There are kinds of soups that I look at. I have to say, seafood and some meat are a little bit on the edge for me. Like, I'm not as big of a fan of like certain stuff. Lamb? I like lamb. You do? Okay. I like lamb. Roasted or chops? Um, either way is good. Okay. I don't really like like intestine or like weird, but, uh, weird, weird. My dad of, likes yeah. chicken intestines. Chitlins. That just grosses me out. And I'm like, I don't know how I would bring that to my mouth. <laughs> exactly. Just watch it hang there. Like, I just think about like what it's doing, like anatomically. Like, <laughs> that, that's disgusting. Why would I ever eat that? <laughs> when, like, when people eat it, like, I would oh, ask it tastes, my... tastes grassy. And I'm like, that's disgusting. I don't want to taste grass. <laughs> I don't want to eat that. My dad, I asked my dad the first time I came of age and understood what that bowl was I wasn't going to eat it, you know? And I understood what it was. I said, well, Dad, when you, before you cook that with your stuff, do you squeegee out all the contents? Or, I mean, you don't leave them in there. Yeah. He says, well, if I'm going to hurry, I don't. But, you know, if I'm going to hurry, if I'm not, I'll squeegee it. With that. I'm like, oh no! Oh my no! My father hates pigs. I mean, you know. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> so that's what it was I, about. Because, like, I remember when I I went to Korea. Yeah. But um, and we would go to this open air
first when we put the, the evolution versus the oh genesis. yeah, I got it. Yeah. You mind if I wrote points on it? Here it is, that's it right there. And you're I'm allowed to use notes, correct? Yes, ma'am, all of them the whole time. Okay, thank okay. you. Yeah, here I just took this off because I was hot. I'm <laughs> again. There's something wrong. <laughs> 